Welcome back. Um, now I'm going to do question number 11 from May, June 2014, paper 4, variant 2. This is a question which is all about areas and there's something about similarities and there's a few other topics involved here as well, actually. Oops. There are like, for example, let's have a look. <coughs> sectors, segments, and so on. Okay, so there's a few little different topics involved in this particular question. Now, the total area of each of the following shapes is x. The area of the shaded part of each shape is k times x. For each shape, find the value of k and write your answer below each diagram. Okay, so basically, the shaded area is some fraction of the whole area. The whole area is x. Okay, so if we look at the first shape, we have a triangle. Now, the area of a triangle is given by the half times the base times the vertical height. So you can say for the big triangle, the base is AD, and the height is the perpendicular height, which is like, let's just lock this in place. Yeah, the perpendicular height, which is like, let me make it thinner. Yeah. So the perpendicular height is from the vertex down to the base. Okay, so the area of the big triangle is x. Okay, they say it's x. And that is equal to the base, which is from A to D, times the height which is all the way from there to the vertical height. Okay, so that's equal to the base times the height, half times the base times the height, right? Now, if you think about it, B to C is the base of the shaded triangle. The vertical height is the same. And they've told us here that AB and BC and CD are the same. So this length is equal to this length is equal to that length. Okay, so you can see that BC is like one part out of three. So BC is one third. So you can say the base of this is like B over three. If that's B, that's B over three. So you have a half times, um, you know, B over three times H, which is going to give you BH over six. Okay? So you can see that the, uh, the proportion of the area is it's going to be one third of the area, isn't it? Okay, the area of x, the area of x is bh over two. Okay, and the area of the shaded part, shaded part of the triangle is equal to bh over six. This is one third of that, and you can see that it's going to be one third because the vertical height is the same. Okay, but the base is one third, therefore the area is going to be one third. So k is going to be one third of basic k is equal to be one third because it's saying. The area of the shaded part is k times x. It's one third times x. Okay, so one third of the whole area, because the base is one third. The heights are the same. The bases are the bases is one third. Therefore, the area is going to be one third. Okay, and you can see that basically um, b over six is equal to one third times. You can see b h over six is the same as one third of b h over two. The area of x is that, and this is the area of the shaded part. Okay, the second question. It's pretty simple, really. We know that the area of the whole circle is pi r squared. They call that x. And the area of the shaded part is a fraction of the whole, the whole area. It's a fraction of x. What fraction of x is it? Well, it's the same as 72 over 360. Okay, so k is equal to 72 over 360. Um, even though it doesn't say leave your answer in its simplest form, I would advise you to do so. It's better to do so. So you've got 72 over 360 divided by 360, okay, which is going to be one-fifth. Okay? That's one-fifth of the whole area. So k is equal to one-fifth. Right. For the third diagram here, you've got a um, triangle. It says EF equals FG and EI equals IH. So that, that's, that length is the same as that length. That length is the same as that length. Okay, so we know that angle is the same in both of these triangles. So they're similar triangles. You've got two triangles that are similar. You have the small triangle, which is shaded, and you have the big triangle, okay, the whole thing. So that's like E 
and G and H, and that's like E and F and I. Okay, we know that they're similar because these two angles are the same, and we know that the this is one one part, this is two parts, that's one part. The ratio, and this is double. The ratio of this side is double the, the length of this, and the ratio of this length is two to one with that. So the ratio of the sides are the same. The ratio of the corresponding sides are the same. So therefore, we can say that they are similar triangles. This this triangle and this triangle are similar. And if they're similar triangles, and the 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 uh, area of the smaller triangle, the length of the smaller triangle is a half the length on the bigger triangles, because e to f is half e to g. That means the area is going to be the square of that, which is a quarter. For similar in similar triangles or similar shapes, the ratio of the areas is the square of the ratio of the length. So the ratio of the area of this of this small triangle will be a quarter of the area of the big triangle. So therefore, if the area of the whole thing is x, the area of the shaded part will be one quarter of x. Because the lengths are half, the areas are going to be a quarter, the square of that. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So those three are in one third, one fifth, and one quarter. And now for the hexagon, it says it's a regular hexagon. Now, this type of shape, this type of problem, a very nice, easy way to deal with it is to just make lots of lines everywhere. So, for example, what I would do here is I would join the diagonals. Okay, that always helps. Well, that doesn't click in place for some reason. And I'll join this diagonal to that diagonal, and that to that one. Okay, and I can see something kind of developing here. If I join the midpoint of this, take that and join join it to the midpoint of that, and I draw another line from here to here. Okay, and I can actually get rid of. Can I get rid of that? Yeah, basically what you can see here, there's probably other ways of doing it, but I'm just using a very visual way, that you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this is not clicking in place. It should be a bit higher up there. Five, six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, you've got twelve triangles which are congruent okay these are congruent triangles okay each one of these triangles are exactly the same okay each one of these triangles are exactly the same so you've got 12 and two of them are shaded so this is going to be one sixth okay so that's one sixth of the whole area okay so k is equal to one sixth so i've just done that in a very visual type of way i'm sure there's other ways of doing it okay but i just just this is a nice visual way of doing it okay um yeah, because basically each of these is an equilateral triangle. We know if, if it's a regular hexagon, all these angles at the center, this, I'm talking about this, and this, and that whole angle there, and that angle, and that angle, and that. Those six angles are all all the same, all right? So that's 60 degrees, that's 60 degrees, that's cut in half. So each of these triangles, each of these little triangles, you know, that length is the same as that length, and so on. That's a half of that length. Okay, because this is an, a regular hexagon. So all these, I mean, they're all congruent triangles. There's 12 of them. So six, uh, two out of them are shaded. So two out of 12 is one sixth. And here we have a sector of a circle. And what's shaded is the segment. Okay, the segment area. So we've got to find what, what proportion or what fraction of the whole area this shaded segment is. Okay, so we know that the area of the segment, okay, the area of the segment will be given by the area of the whole sector. Take away the area of the triangle. Okay, so that's the first step to find the area of the segment. Okay, the shaded part here. Okay, now to find that, we need to know the area of the sector. The area of the whole sector is like this pizza slice. Well, it's like a quarter of a whole circle. So it's like quarter of pi r squared. All right. And that's your R here, okay? All right. And the area of this triangle, let's call this R and call this R again. The area of the triangle is like a half times pi times, sorry, what am I talking about, pi? Oh, I'm getting tired today. Okay, it's using a, basically a half times base times height. It's a right angle triangle. So that is the that is the base and that's the vertical height. So it's a half times base times height. So it's half times R squared. 
Now we want to know what fraction it is of the whole, what fraction of the shaded area. So what I found now is a shaded area. I need to know what fraction it is of the whole thing. So I'm going to divide it by the area of the whole thing, which is a quarter pi r squared. So now that will simplify. Okay. Um, if I multiply both the top and the bottom by 4, why 4? To get rid of the fractions in the numerators and the denominators. So if I multiply the numerator by 4, I'll have pi r squared minus 2r squared. If I multiply the denominator by 4, I'll have pi r squared. So I've multiplied both denominator and numerator by the same number. I haven't changed the value of the fraction, just the way it looks. Now I can see that there's a few things that are common here. Well, this r squared is common. So I've got r squared, and then I've got um, pi minus 2 over pi r squared. Now the r squareds will cancel out because they're factors of both the numerator and the denominator. So I'm left with pi minus 2 over pi. Um, the answer, that would be the answer if it said give your answer in its exact form, but it doesn't say that. So it would be better, I'd say, to just round it to, to 3SF, to just write it down as its, its value as a in three three significant figures. So you go back to your calculator and you write pi minus two over pi. Let's put that in a fraction. Pi minus two over pi. Pi minus two divided by pi. And that will give us our answer once you press S to D zero point three six Three. So that gives us 0 0.363 as our answer. So we've got 0 0.363. That's the value of k to three significant figures. Let me make sure I rounded that properly. Let me make sure I rounded it properly, and then we'll finish off. 0 0.36, yes, it's 0 0.3633. So that becomes 0 0.363 to 3SF. And there we have that question finished. Okay, so um, I hope you understood that well, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for listening. Okay.